Hello, Akiba Schechter. I'm Gidon Isaacs. I'm a rabbi who has newly moved to the area from the East Coast, working in congregations in the southern suburbs, Temple Bethel and Temple Anshe Sholom. I'm also the proud father of two Akiva Schechter students. And it's truly my honor to talk to you today about the Parsha Chaye Sarah. There is so much that goes on, so much action, so much story that happens at the beginning of the Parsha. And as we have Rivka agreeing to come to meet Yitzchak and to marry Yitzchak, she's on her way. And after all that has happened, there's a quiet moment. We move from Rivka to Yitzchak, who is out in the fields. It says, Vayitse Yitzchak Lasuach Basade. He's gone out to do something in the fields. And the rabbis are not sure what, what it is he's doing. This is a word that we know only appears this one time. This verb only appears this one time. And not just in Torah and all of Tanakh. So the rabbis try to explain. They find an explanation for what this means. In the Talmud, they tell us, En sicha elat They say, there is only tefillah when we are using that word sicha. That's what it means. He's out there in the fields praying in tefillah. And as per usual with the rabbis, using a common midrashic technique to explain a word, there's actually a much deeper point that they are making in this seemingly simple linguistic explanation. They're telling us that tefillah is the same as sicha. Sicha, conversation or dialogue. They're telling us something about the nature of tefillah, that it is a conversation. It's a conversation between me and the divine, a conversation between me and my very own holy soul, understanding the needs of my soul. It might be a conversation between me and our ancestors, our tradition. Those like the Avot and the Imahot, who I certainly never met, but even maybe those who I did know and have lost and can take quiet moments during tefillah to hear their voice and their teachings. What's beautiful about this teaching is that I think the rabbis go even deeper. It can let us know that any time that we are engaged in dialogue, in connection, bringing our whole selves, bringing our soul, that is tefillah. Tefillah can be words and it can be song, but it can also be a way of being in the world. When I am truly present to someone else and I feel that divine spark within me connect and recognize the divine spark in the other, that dialogue, that is tefillah. When I am like Yitzchak and out in wilderness and observing the beauty and wonder of nature, feeling deep within myself, the created nature, the wonder and mystery of this divine created world, that is tefillah. When I'm engaged in acts of chesed or tzedakah, guided by the Torah, guided by tradition, again, using that holy spark within me to do good in the world, that is a kind of tefillah. And so I hope that you can take inspiration from Yitzchak Avinu in our Pasha this week to know that sometimes being in a service, the words might not inspire us or the music but to know that there are so many other ways to engage in tefillah. And I hope that you can take that message with you into the world.